Hey, hey, everybody. I am streamed in two places. It's super creepy on my screen. My kid is screaming outside the door, but my husband's home to watch him. So don't you guys fret. He is not unattended. He's just grouchy. So today I wanted to welcome you guys to day two of the mini course on standing out and standing out with your brand and everything. So I wanted to take a few minutes, hop on and say hi when you get on. Let me know you're here. Let me know if you are catching this later on the replay also. And um, we're going to get started. Let me also, um, I'm going to be grabbing, I'll post it after, I'll post it after. I was going to post the link because I told you guys I would have it ready and it's just about ready. Um, so you guys can hop into the branding course later um, if you chose to do so. So I have some notes here, my lovelies. And I actually have some more on the printer that I will grab off. And I wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit about storytelling. And I know we touched on it just a little bit yesterday. Hopefully my husband will remove my screaming child from outside my office door shortly so you guys can hear me and not him. That would be great. Hello, Buffy. Hello, Julie. Hello, everybody. Hello over in the Goal Getter Girl community. I've got both windows open. So you guys, super awesome hack. You can go live <laughs> in two different Facebook videos on the same computer at the same time. You just have to open Facebook twice. So that's what I'm doing. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me. I know my podcast gal said, keep the microphone closer to your face. Um, hey, Maggie. Welcome, welcome, you guys. Okay. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about storytelling. Storytelling is so, 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 so valuable. It's how people get to know you. It's how you get to, you know, you get your message out into the world. People know that you are a real human. And I actually, I'm a few minutes late because I was actually on the, on the phone with um, my event coach and I love her and we were talking about being real humans and how you know that's one of the cool things about meeting people in person is it gives you that real human interaction and it like I don't know it just solidifies that you actually know this person you know that they are a real human and they really do have you know real human things going on like screaming kids in the background um because he's a mama's boy and he'd rather be in here tormenting you guys than having his lunch with his dad so there's this sequence to telling a story there's this connection that comes from it so in forbes which i feel like is kind of a pretty reliable source forbes you know for business people in business um they're, you know, they report that, you know, every business has a story, whether it's, you know, some huge conglomerate, you know, the people who started Walmart, they have a story. The people who started Home Depot, they have a story. The people who started Apple, they have a story. You know, there's a story behind every business, no matter how big or how small they are. And that story is usually something, you know, even like somebody like Amazon, the person who started Amazon started it in his garage. Same with Google. And so it doesn't matter how big you grow, you still have that foundational story. You still have your roots, where you came from, how you got started, how you got going in your business, right? So let me move this over. I want to scooch this screen down so I can see both at the same time. Um, I know I'm a total weirdo. If you guys could see my screen right now, you, you'd probably freak out. Um, so the way that people start to get known, the way that people start to get traction, the way that people start to feel that connection and that relation is to start sharing a story that is compelling to their ideal client. And your ideal client is the one who is going to be drawn to you based on that story. Um, so obviously we always tell the truth in our stories. We always tell how it actually shook out, how it actually happened, and what some of those results were. A good brand can inspire your business and your customers based on your story also. So you kind of combine those elements together and you have that compelling story. You have that gorgeous brand that, that combines kind of all those elements, combines that vibe, combines all the different pieces together, right? And that helps deliver your story. So that's, I, I wanted to talk about storytelling in that correlation with branding because it all does actually go together starting to stand out 
starting to get yourself out there, it all comes from your story. And your story has to do with your unshakable why that we talked about yesterday. So like for me, mine was mom shaming. And I let it get to me for, for a really long time, you know, for years. You know, I, I had it even before I, I left my corporate job. Um, and finally, I just decided, you know what, this is enough. I've had enough and I'm not going to be mom shamed anymore because what I'm doing is not wrong. By being a business owner, by working for myself, by helping other women grow a business and provide for their families and provide for themselves, there's nothing wrong with that. So I had to kind of correlate my story in that way, but being mom shamed myself and how that made me feel is something that any of you guys who have ever been mom shamed before or fear that you're going to be mom shamed or have been or are being mom shamed, it's something that you guys can actually relate to. Having that mom guilt is relatable. You know, we all feel guilty whether it's going into our corporate jobs and leaving our kids at daycare or with a nanny or with the babysitter or with our mother-in-law or whomever, or it's, you know, not, or it's the flip side. Like me, I was like, oh, I'm a terrible housewife. Like I want to do more than just white boogers and fold laundry all day. Like that's like my tagline. I think I'm, I might even trademark that, <laughs> I, but I swear that that's, I got to that point where I was like, when's the last time I left my house? Not even so much when's the last time I took a shower, but when's the last time I left my house? You know, and that's all part of the story. I like having interaction with other women. That's why I'm so freaking excited to go to Cabo like, and have this retreat because I'm so excited to be in the physical presence of other women who get it, who are part of it. And, um, and so that's all part of my story. But that's all things that a lot of you guys have told me that you relate to because you want those things too. You feel those things too. You don't like to be mom shamed. You don't like to have mom guilt. All you want to do is have a business and help other people and help them be healthy and grow their businesses and grow their lives and grow their, you know, all the different things, right? But you don't want somebody out there making fun of you or telling you it's wrong or putting, you know, shaming you for doing it. So that's how, you know, a lot of times we can be relatable. You want to grow a business in spite of what all those people have to say about it. That's, that's the same with me. I want to grow a business in spite of what other people have to say about it. So there, according to Forbes, there are five, yes, five. I want to make sure I tell you guys the right thing. There are five different, um, categories to telling a good story that is compelling for your business and for your customers and or potential customers. So I'm just going to kind of go over some of that stuff. Um, and then we're going to get into some really good stuff. Um, I have all, like I said, I've got pages and pages and pages of notes here. So, um, we're going to start that. So the first thing that Forbes says is that you should set your parameters, right? Your story should be engaging with very clear focus. Um, otherwise you're going to quickly lose people's attention. So if you're just telling some random story, blah, 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 and people don't relate to it, they're going to hop off of your live. They're not going to watch the whole video. They're not going to come back. Um, even like for me, I find that my rants because you know, rants about mom shaming, rants about this or that or whatever, they tend to get the most, um, the most engagement. But that's because that's what these, you know, that's what the people who follow me are typically feeling in that moment. They're feeling that mom shame. They're feeling that overwhelm. They're feeling that confusion, that insecurity, whatever it is that I happen to be ranting about at that time. And so they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's going to be the same with you, whatever your business is. So um, you want to make sure that you are clear and on focus. That's why I took notes today because I wanted to make sure that I was clear and that I stayed focused because I have the squirrel in my brain who bounces all around. Um, this is where your energy really can come into play too. So that's why I feel like my rants get the most attention because I'm so fired up about the topic. And I, it's like, it's like the thing that, Hey Mallory, it's like the thing that I just can't shut up about. Right. And and you guys have probably noticed this too. Like when you get going and you're like talking to like, usually it's in person, but when you get going and you're talking to your girlfriends or your cousins or your sisters or whatever, your coworkers, and you're like, yes, yes, yes. And you're going on and on and like all that stuff. And then you get everybody all riled up. They're captivated by whatever it is that you're saying, whether they agree with you or not, it's a whole different story, but they're captivated by it. And they're like, yeah, like, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. 
So your energy really comes into play. So being confident, which we talked about yesterday, being confident about what you're sharing, knowing that you stand in your power on it and that you're unshakable in that. You are absolutely unshakable in your why. You're unshakable in your purpose. You're unshakable in your message. That energy is going to come across. That confidence is going to come across. And nobody's going to be able to tell you otherwise because you're going to be out there sharing your message in such a way with such conviction that, and, and you have to be in this, in this kind of mindset that you don't actually care if somebody doesn't agree with what you're doing. You don't actually care if somebody unsubscribes from your list. You don't actually care if they unfriend you on Facebook because what are the chances that you're actually really friends with them to begin with? So letting all of that go, now what's your message? Think about who are you? You're telling the story. So who's telling the story? You. You're telling it, you know, kind of through, you know, your you're the narrator of your own story. You're reliving what has happened. Why are you telling your story? You have to kind of keep that in the forefront. Why are you even telling the story? Why are you, like, why do I tell people that I've been mom shamed? Why do I tell people how that made me feel? Why do I tell people that I'm no longer going to stand for it? Because I want to make an impact on other people so that they'll stand up, so that they'll say, I'm not going to stand up or I'm not going to tolerate this either. I'm going to keep living my my. <laughs> I can't talk, you guys. I've been talking all morning. I want to live my life the way that I want to, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So why are you telling the story? Because you really care about your message. If you don't care about your message, and you, then you have to get a new message. You have to be sure that that is an unshakable why, that that message means something to you in your core, in your soul. And you have to live your story. You have to, you know, like, you have to live your story every day. You have to live that message. You have to live your brand. So why are you telling that story? What are you, what, what is the anticipated outcome that you're expecting from telling that story? When and where does the story take place? This is where you're going to want to get, like, really, really, like, into vivid details. Um, you know, you can think about, like, so, like, for me. I, I kind of, I felt mom guilted because I stopped nursing my first son, um, a little earlier than I would have liked. Okay. So quite a bit earlier than I would have liked. I only nursed him for like four months and then I went back to work and I had this perfectly great office space with a door that locked and closed and whatever I could have very well pumped in there. If I was at my office every day, sometimes I'm sitting down at the County building and the only place to pump is in their filthy bathroom. So, you, I mean, that's disgusting. Or in their lobby with a bunch of construction workers. So I'm like, okay, well, I may as well just go to the filthy gym and pump my boobs there. You know, so it was a very uncomfortable situation for me. And so I would go hours and hours and I'm like, oh, you know, but you can't go back out to your car because then if you lose your space and you have to start over and you've already been waiting for four freaking hours to see somebody at the goddamn county who has to take your money or whatever. I hate the county. I hate going down there. <laughs> I hate permits. I hate all of that stuff. Um, so I'm super glad I don't have to do that anymore. But I also have like resentment built up because like, you know, that was something that kind of affected me like on a mom level, on a personal level, affected my kid. And I mean, don't get me wrong. He's still nourished and fed and all that stuff, but it wasn't my plan. So you tell these stories and you tell it as you know you tell it vividly like can you imagine having to sit down at the county building and pumping your boobs in the dirty bathroom or in front of all the construction workers or out in your hot car and then you have to start that number process all over again because you missed your number being called you may as well go to the dmv and do it our dmv is just as our dmv is even worse actually so you start to give that visual of when where all of these different things that play into your story and how that how that impacted the situation. Um, if I was waiting for my number in a private room at the Ritz Carlton, it might've been a different story. So um, then you'll also want to think about like, who are the people in the story? How does that impact your story? Uh, what are these people trying to achieve? What challenges, you know, are, what challenges are they facing? So the parameters of the story, um, this, they have to make sense to your audience. They have to um, pop that up here. They have to make sense to your audience. 
they also have to set the scene. They have to set the scene for your audience. So every single one of you has a different story. Every single one of you has a different scenario of why you decided to work for yourself, why you decided to go into business, why you decided to ever buy your first challenge pack. What did that mean to you? How were you feeling at that moment when you're like, enough is enough, I have to make a change, whether that's for your business, for your body, for your health, what part of that was your why? And what part of that is unchangeable, unshakable, that, that you know, nobody can tell you that it's wrong or stupid or, you know, scam or whatever, because it actually changed your life. What part of your story, what part of your journey is that kind of life changing shift? I want you to paint a really vivid picture. And most importantly, why are you telling the story? Think about that for just a second. Then we have to go into being authentic and speaking our truth. So when we get out there and we speak our truth, you know, yesterday I felt like, you know, I kind of got my message across, you know, via, via speaking my truth, via a rant almost here with you guys. Um, but this is like, this is where you just show up and you're freaking real and you're a human and you're like, yeah, this is what I stand for or against. This is what I absolutely stand against and I'm not going to tolerate it in my life. I'm not going to tolerate it in my business. I'm not going to tolerate it in my home, whatever that looks like for you. And you just get out there and you say it and you live it and you be that, right? That's who you are. That's part of your brand showing up every single day as that person who who doesn't go back on that unshakable why because that story that got you to make this decision to make these choices to move forward is unshakable so even when you feel like your story may not be earth shattering it's still your story and it's still your reason why and it's still going to connect people to you it's going to get people who relate to you. So maybe you didn't have a traumatic event. Maybe you didn't, um, maybe you didn't have to lose a hundred pounds if you're a health and fitness coach. Maybe you didn't overcome autoimmune disease. That's okay because not every single person in the world has all of that stuff going on for them either. So maybe it's just like, okay, I wanted to, I just wanted to add 10 years to my life. I wanted to do something else. Maybe it's just that you wanted in on the business opportunity. Maybe it's just that you couldn't possibly stand working for another asshole boss, you know, because maybe she, I don't know. I've worked for, with some ladies that are total assholes. Like maybe you just couldn't take another single day of that. That's okay because there's going to be a lot of people out there who can relate to that too. So it doesn't have to be this huge catastrophic earth shattering, you know, thing that happened. It can just be that you freaking decided that you weren't going to take that lady's crap anymore because she was an asshole and you were sick of being treated that way by that asshole lady. Like I had a lady who I used to work with. Luckily, I didn't work for her. Um, and in every possible way, she reminded me of the queen from Alice in Wonderland, like off with their heads. Like I swear to God, she would have like, off with their heads if, you know, if she had had the ability, but luckily she didn't. Um, and she was just a tyrant, an absolute, complete and total tyrant. And her employees hated her. So if she was my boss, that would be my story of why I had to, you know, have my own corporate escape plan. So I no longer had to put up with people like her in my life. Um, so the other thing is transparency. This shows your uniqueness. This shows your human qualities. This shows that you're a real person. You're a real mom. You're a real woman. You have real struggles. You have real insecurities. You have all the real things that all the other women in the world have that they can relate to you about. You have the human aspect has to go into your brand. You have to acknowledge those flaws, those quirks, those traits, because if you don't have a human aspect, something that people can relate to, something that people can be like, all right, yeah, if I talk to if I talk to Amy, she's going to get me. She's going to understand what I'm talking about. She understands about being mom shamed and how, you know, how hard and how scary it can be to actually put yourself out there because what if these people have something to say? What if they say this? What if they say that? Chances are people have said it to me. It's, you know, it's just making that decision on how you respond. So all of that goes into your story. 
recognizing too that things aren't always easy. So this is like facing your objections head on. This is like, um, this is showing where, hey, Gabriella, this is showing where you have overcome, you know, insecurities, failures, mistakes, challenges in your own business, in your own journey, whether, you know, like, um, even for me, like some days, and I, it's so funny because I just was talking to, I was, like I said, I was just on the phone with one of my coaches and you know, we both had this conversation about, and it might even be a tagline for one of my upcoming retreats that your business success is not packaged into size two jeans. So a lot of times women, and this is partly my story as well, because I'm at my heaviest non-pregnant weight ever. And, you know, part of that's on me, that's totally on me. But, um, but part of it is like telling myself that, you know, and getting myself right in the mindset that even though maybe I have to wear pants that are a size bigger than I wore before I had kids or when I was at my ideal weight or whatever, um, it doesn't mean that I can't have success in my business. And a lot of times we, and even with you guys, a lot of you are beach body coaches. You guys may feel like if you're not already at your goal weight in your journey, that how could you possibly sell challenge packs? But that's not the truth. Because here's the thing, and I love I love this analogy. I wish I remember who um, who I heard it from. I didn't make this up. Um, if you are a new mom, and I know a lot of you guys can probably relate to this, if you are a new mom and you have a three, six, nine month old baby, somebody who is pregnant is going to feel comfortable coming to you for advice on what they should do with you know X Y Z thing when they bring their new baby home. From the hospital or what to expect when they're in the hospital right because you've already done it granted you just barely did it and you're barely a step ahead of them in that process of being a new mother but you're still ahead of them you still have tips you still have tricks these diapers leak this butt cream is better you this bottle makes them burp better all the things this car seat works better this stroller is amazing you know all these different things just in that three to six to nine months, whatever it is, of being a new mother. That already puts you ahead of them in the journey. So that's the same with business. Um, that's the same with, you know, having a coaching opportunity, whether it's the business side of things or the health and wellness side of things or the weight loss side of things. You're already ahead in your journey in that way. And that's the best way that I can think to compare it is that new mom. You know, so maybe um, maybe you don't necessarily want somebody who's an old mom. And by old mom, I mean like, okay, your kids are probably 30 years old. Like, it's a little bit different now. Things are different. Times have changed. Um, resources are different. Butt creams are different. Diapers are different. Everything's so different. So if I were to call my mom and say, mom, what kind of bottles did you use? If she could even remember, there's a chance that I'm not going to even get those bottles or diapers or stroller or whatever anyway. So it's kind of obsolete. It's kind of irrelevant. Whereas, you know, somebody who just did it. So somebody like you guys, if you're a beach body coach, if you're an essential oils coach, whatever that is, you've already gotten, you know, your feet wet. You're already in the, you know, in the grit of it all. And you're already able to be like, okay, these are the tips I learned. This is something I learned this, you know, when you're planning out your containers, plan it around your proteins, whatever that looks like, right? You can share those tips. It's all part of your story. It's all relevant. And it gives you those admirable characteristics that people are like, oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. She's real. She's got it. She's got these cool tips. And she told me this thing about planning my dinner around my proteins and what to get at Costco and what not to get at Costco because, you know, whatever, and it was super useful. All of those things matter, all of it. So kind of that's a little bit of a diversion. So sorry, because like I said, squirrel in my brain. Um, so you want to have a clear outcome. How did, how did you change by, you know, you were so typically you're in crisis. Prince Charming comes along to save the day. And then something else happens and, you know, when your day is saved. So think about how that is for you. Maybe you hired a coach, you got a mentor, you bought Shakeology, you started working out, 21 Day Fix. You know, I hear so many times, and this is my story as well because I started there too. 
P90X changed my life, you know? And so in that situation, P90X would be the hero because it started you on your journey. It started you on the weight loss. And then you were able to pay that forward. You were able to keep that going, keep that momentum moving forward. Next, you're going to want to include in there um, your confidence. You want to be consistent and you want to be consistently confident in sharing your message. You want people to know that it wasn't just like this one time rant and then you crawl back in your cave. You want people to know like, all right, this is it. I'm the real deal. I'm showing up every single day. You know, granted, you take some time off if you want to, but showing up every single day on brand, making sure that my message is the same, my branding is the same, my colors are the same, my logos are the same, um, and that gives you also brand recognition and creates brand awareness, but being consistent about when you're speaking about your brand and your story, people don't get bored hearing your story over and over again. I talked a little bit yesterday about how a good story keeps us intrigued, just like we like going to the movies. It's not quote unquote a fun physical activity to go to the movies, but we enjoy it and we feel so good going to the movies that we keep going back and keep going back, even if we think that you know paying 16 bucks for a movie ticket is crazy, but we enjoy going. That's because our brain releases our happy chemicals, you know, the endorphins, just like when you work out, you feel happier, you're a happier person, you have more energy because of the way your brain and your body physically responds. That's a lot the same in a good story. It keeps us connected. We've been telling stories since the beginning of time. We've been telling stories since, you know, since people wrote it with clay on walls and now like paleontologists and archaeologists are finding those stories later and having to interpret interpret them. Storytelling goes back to the beginning of humanity. So being consistent in what your story is, being consistent in what your message is, what you stand for, what you stand against, that typically doesn't change what how you got started. Your message may change a little bit as your business evolves. But that story of what, like, that, that breaking point for you or, hey, Ivy, whatever that is, that's going to pretty much always be consistent. Um, what got you into your business? What got you into your MLM? What made you decide to do this or that or whatever? That's always going to be the same. So be consistent about it and be damn proud about it because there's no shame in any of it. That's your story. And whether it was something that came to you as a mistake, came to you by accident, that's okay. It's part of your story. It made you who you are. It's unique to you and people will connect to you. The right people will, um, they'll connect to you. So getting your customers involved, that's a, a kind of a neat thing about like Facebook, Facebook live is you guys can give me feedback. You guys can ask questions, right? That's the same with you. You can get on there, do Facebook live. You can do phone calls. You can do zoom calls. You can do all these different things to have that interaction with your community, to have that interaction with your potential clients. Um, that way, when they're being, when people are being heard, there it creates an emotional connection, you know, or, you know, especially like if it's something that's really on their heart or really something that they've been dealing with themselves. If you get them on here and you're like, hey, you know, feel free to post your questions and you guys have like an actual conversation, especially something like, you know, weight loss or health or, you know, so if you have an autoimmune disease and you're trying to figure out how to get healthier, um, whether that's, you know, detoxifying your house with essential oils, or maybe you have 30 pounds of baby weight to lose. That's a very emotional process for so many people because carrying around that extra weight, struggling with an autoimmune, that is, that's a heavy thing. It's a heavy burden to bear and it's very, very emotional. So if you're telling your story and people are like, oh my God, she gets it. She gets what I'm going through and hearing that story and relating to that story that really strikes a chord. So even getting that interaction, blogs, Facebook lives, um, Zoom calls, webinars, all that stuff helps use your story to connect with your audience. And um, <laughs> yeah, I was just making sure I didn't leave any like major part of that off. I Like I said, I have so many, I have so many notes. Um, also, it makes your story not only relatable, but it makes your story memorable. That somebody's like, oh yeah, I was talking with Amy the other day and she said this, but then I asked this question about this because that's how obviously it was something that related to you. And this was what the answer was. She told me to do this, this, and this. 
and it you know helped me to grow my brand it helped me to expand my reach because I implemented this one thing that's the same with you whatever your business is if you open up those lines of communication and you allow people to take what they're currently struggling with and you talk to them about it they're instantly then connected with you there's a chance that they may be like eh, I'm not really that connected I'm not gonna use their advice cool move along no no big deal no big deal at all that's kind of it's kind of also a way of like pre-qualifying people that way you're not wasting your time down the road on like a one-hour discovery call with somebody who doesn't really like you anyways like they've just kind of moved along and filtered themselves out like I said pulling the weeds from a garden you pull out all the weeds so that you're left with the beautiful flowers which are your ideal dream clients so going into storytelling like I said storytelling is as old as humanity it goes back hundreds and hundreds and tens and tens of thousands of years to back like I said to the cavemen but you know the ice age all of that stuff right we find evidence of that all the time every single day something new is coming up you know something even like the Bible if you're religious if you're Christian the Bible is a story it's you know it's the prophets recollection of of the events that occurred during that time and they're being retold to us it's like the number one selling book of all times and it's a story and I'm not saying that it's false or made up or fiction or anything like that but it's somebody telling their story the way that they understood those events to have occurred you know and and it's impactful the Bible has seriously impacted probably more lives than any other story or document or book out there in the world right so think about the impact that that has had on humanity and it's one of the oldest written 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 word in the in the entire world so it also teaches us you know the, a story teaches us the lessons it teaches us the history it teaches us how the evolution of um, of events have occurred you know like they always say there's always a lesson to be learned so it teaches us those lessons um, whether we are receptive to those learnings or not is up to us but it still teaches us so your story is going to be like okay this is what I learned this is where I was in this state of crisis in comes Prince Charming you know aka whatever your coach product service whatever it was and this is how it changed my life you know there's all the climax and all the different stuff right um, then another part of your story so storytelling comes naturally to humans we tell bedtime stories fairy tales you know all kinds you know we sit around the campfire tell ghost stories well I don't because that freaks me out but you know there's all kinds of stories that are told just naturally it's part of human nature to want to tell stories to want to get our stories out there to want to you know let the imagination run wild all of that right so um, children actually really relate to stories because they feel you know think about yourself if your kid is you know feeling down in the dumps or they're not feeling very brave or whatever it's said that children are often taught or it's contributes to their teachings of kindness and courage and bravery and even stuff like you know all you moms out there will get this stuff like potty training that is all learned so you know through stories and it's enhanced through storytelling. Ghost stories freak you out too. Yeah, I knew I liked you. I don't know why I'm like so super afraid of ghosts. Like, I don't even watch Unsolved Mysteries because those stories freak me out. And then I have to watch cartoons all night long to get it out of my mind. <laughs> so I don't, I just don't do it. I don't do ghost stories or anything like that. So, um, but yeah, even stuff like potty training, we use stories. We use, I have a potty training book in the boys' bathroom right now. So it's like, we use stories to help reinforce all of these things and like you know we show these heroes these characters these you know the superheroes all of that we show like oh Elmo is going potty oh Batman is very brave oh Iron Man saved the world like you know all of these things and we show them as heroes we show them as brave we show them as wise we show them as as like these these strong brave characters that we can idolize and that our kids can idolize and even well here's a perfect example even Bruce Wayne has to get vulnerable 
right? So you think about like the Batman story. Bruce Wayne has a story. He has a backstory. A lot of times in marketing, it's called a backstory or in movies, it's called a backstory. So Bruce Wayne has a tragic backstory, right? So he may be the millionaire, billionaire, whatever, who dresses up like a bat and goes out and is a vigilante and saves Gotham City, but he has a tragic backstory. His backstory is that he was a child and his ch his parents were murdered right in front of him in a dark alley after a play or a movie or whatever, right? And so then he gets his vengeance by inheriting the family fortune and using some of that money to get this really awesome car and a cape and all the cool gadgets, right? And go out and, you know, fight crime. So even Batman has that backstory. So you have to be able to, you know, in, in all stories have this, all stories have that kind of tragic, you know, think about the movie. There's always the damsel in distress. There's always, you know, that Bruce Wayne type of character. And it always tells the story through that person's eyes and, you know, almost like through the hero's eyes, right? So it'll put you into Cinderella shoes or Batman shoes or, or whatever, right? Rapunzel shoes. And you see her sitting up there in the tower, you know, whatever. We watch a lot of Disney movies. So even like somebody like Lightning McQueen, he's the rookie and it tells his story before he gets stranded in Radiator Springs, right? All of that we can relate to. And it captures our interest. And we're like, oh, poor Bruce Wayne, poor Cinderella, you know, like, oh, poor Lightning McQueen, he lost Mac, Mac dumped him out on the freeway, like, whatever, right? And then it takes you into like, so then there was that big catastrophic event. And then fast forward to, you know, reality to today. And <laughs> I'm trying to get the right words. <laughs> um, it takes you into right now. And then the story is always told in the natural voice, um, not like that radio announcer voice. You know, it's always told in a natural voice. And that really kind of draws you in. So you don't get that, let's get ready to rumble type of announcement voice. It takes you into the feeling of where Bruce Wayne was when he was that small child and gets you kind of in that quiet, dark space before his parents are murdered in that dark alley. And then like, urge, fast forward to today, they're in Gotham City, you know, aka New York City, and it's crazy cars and taxis and all the kinds of stuff everywhere. And then in comes the bad guy and blah, blah, blah. And then he, you know, here comes the hero. So, um, which is Batman. It's not Bruce Wayne. It's Batman. It's his alter ego. Batman comes in and saves the day. Just like Prince Charming comes in and saves the day for Cinderella and sweeps her off her feet and blah, blah, blah. And actually, I'm kind of trying to go back and forth. Maybe I feel like the fairy godmother is her hero instead of Prince Charming. But, you know, bear with me there. But there's always something that comes in and saves the day. So, like, for me, having massive mentors, <laughs> I had a mentor who helped me realize that my story in business was that, yes, I can do it. Yes, I will do it. And I deserve to do it. And there's no shame in doing so. There's no shame in being a working mom, whether you work in the home, out of the home, whatever. And there's no shame if you don't want to do that. So that's part of my story. I had a mentor and she was kind of like my Prince Charming in a way and helped me on my path. And then you kind of go to the next step and then, okay, I'm having this this situation in my business and I want to up level, I want to do this. In comes the new mentor, saves the day, teaches you the lessons and on you go. But that's a lot like you guys. So beach body coaches, you know, I've got a bunch of you in here watching beach body coaches. You're having this struggle. You're whether it's um, a financial struggle, a weight loss struggle, a health struggle in comes beach body, your prince charming and saves the day in whatever fashion that is for you and fits in your story. Beachbody saved the day. Beachbody is your Prince Charming. How did they sweep you off your feet? How did they get you into that transitionary mode? How does your story go from damsel in distress Cinderella Bruce Wayne over here to Batman Bruce Wayne Prince Charming coming in and saving the day? So there, that's kind of a very broad overview of how most stories go, but that's what captivates us. There's all this, I'm not going to read it to you guys. It's you can look it up. Um, there's the hero's journey. It's pages and pages and pages. And we learned it in like 10th grade or something about, you know, the first stage of the hero's journey. Um, 
Let's see, I'll give you just a little bit of context on it. Um, it's kind of like what we talked about. The first stage is setting the tone, giving you the backstory, that type of thing. Um, I feel like it's kind of boring, and it, I think it might kill my vibe if I start reading it to you guys right now. So here are going to be a few different tips to get your story out there, to get heard, to start sharing your story in a way that people are going to relate to. This is like, this is just like a few ideas to kind of get those story wheels turning, right? And the first one is to get raw, to get real. Like I'm not overly happy telling you guys that I weigh 30 pounds more than I should. I'm not overly happy telling you guys that I was mom shamed. I'm not overly happy telling you guys that people in my family and people in my 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 actual people that I consider like friends and family that they actually like made me feel bad about having a business about the way I parented and that it really, really bothered me to the point that I actually went and saw a therapist about it. Um, and he told me I wasn't crazy <laughs> and to stop coming. So that, you know, like that was like redemption, but it's still part of my story. It's something that probably a lot of you guys can relate to that somebody's made you feel bad. So you have to get raw. You have to be vulnerable. Vulnerability isn't just a buzzword. It's not just a scam. It is a real honest way to connect with your audience. It's the way that you share your truth. Whatever your truth is, like yesterday I talked about what my truth was and what I stand for, which is anti-mom shaming and helping women. Like get, It is my, my sole duty to give women a hand and help them learn to grow their business because I think they freaking deserve it. And I don't feel bad about saying that. So, you know, not to mention, like we said, people love a good story. So share your engaging story. Get people interested. Get people, like, warmed up to you. Let them get to know you a little bit. The real version of you is nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be afraid of. I mean, you don't have to give every single little detail, right? Like, you don't have to go into all of that. But be honest. Talk about life, like talk about real life, talk about the struggles. Like we got on this call, my kid was screaming outside the door. No, I wasn't neglecting him. My husband was there, but he was still screaming. He didn't want my husband. He wanted me because he knew I was getting on this video. I swear that's the way it just goes. But you share those things. You share the lessons. You share how you overcome them. You share that, you know, like I shared recently that I have my child, my youngest child, he's almost two, on a waiting list for the new year to go into um, a preschool program for 12 hours a week. And I struggled and struggled and struggled with the mom guilt and mom shaming side of that for a long time. Like, what are people gonna say? I'm supposed to be that quote unquote stay at home mom, blah, blah, blah. Well, he's getting 12 hours of play date, educational play date, we getting 12 hours with you guys focused on work. So that way the rest of the time, all I have to do is play with him. I don't have to think about juggling it. I don't have to think about him out upset outside my, office door, you know, whether my husband's home or not. I don't have to think about those things because all I have to do is play with him. And that quality time means more to me than, than whatever somebody else might say. So those are things. Share your day. Share the things that happen throughout the day. Be real. There's a reason why people like Beachbody say, open up your profile. While I don't do that per se due to like security things, there's a reason why opening up your profile and letting people see the real you, the day-to-day -day stuff, you know, like this morning, I had diaper explosion and there was poop on my arm. Like I didn't take a picture of that because nobody actually wants to see that, but it may go in my stories later. Like it actually happens. You want to not be a robot. You want to get out there. You want to be a human. You want to untrain yourself of all the things that you think or that people have kind of instilled into you of how you should be showing up in your business unless you're already showing up as the truest version of yourself, sharing your story, sharing your truth, sharing your unshakable why instead of like, oh, I should post three to five sweat, you know, sweaty selfies, some random quotes, whatever pictures a day. Yeah, you can still post all those things, but post some real shit in between that actually gets people to know you. Like, we all know that Beachbody coaches work out. We all know that essential oil coaches use essential oils. We all know that Rodan and Fields people wash their face twice a day. We know this. So tell us what we don't know. Tell us why, why you? Why should I sign up with you as my coach? What makes you different 
than the five other coaches that I know. What, why you? And if you don't know, ask. Ask the people who've already signed up with you, why me? Why did you pick me? They're going to tell you. They'll definitely tell you. They have no problem telling you. People love to tell you their opinions. So ask them. But be simple. Be human. Have fun with it. Get out there. Be a little vulnerable. You don't have to air all your dirty laundry. Just share. Share like you would be sitting down in a room across the table having a cup of coffee. It's pumpkin spice season. Truth. I don't like pumpkin spice lattes, by the way. I think they're terrible. I love pumpkin and I love coffee just not together. Um, share things like that, things that make you unique. If you don't like pumpkin spice lattes, tell people. You might get like, what? You know, it's kind of like telling people you've never watched Game of Thrones, which for the longest time I was one of those people. Now I'm like, what? You have to watch it. That type of stuff, like just getting real, having real conversations, making real connections, giving a shit about the people you're connecting with, caring about them, wanting them to like genuinely in your heart and in your soul, wanting them to succeed. I don't want anybody who signs up with me to not succeed. Not because of me, but I want them to succeed because I know what that could possibly mean to them. And that's the same with you. Whatever it is that your business is, you want them to succeed. You want them to lose that 10 pounds. You want them to overcome that autoimmune disease and disorder or whatever. You want them to get rid of their acne. You want that for them. And if you don't, then maybe you're in the wrong spot. Maybe you're in the wrong business. But wanting it for them, that's something you should do. Share your clients. I, I just recently started posting that Spotlight um, Saturday thing because I want you guys to reach out, share your downline, share your clients, share those successes, give them those highlights. One, it gives you social proof. It gives them social proof and it gives them that like celebration, that pat on the back that maybe, you know, so many of us are love languages, words of affirmation, and we just never hear them. It gives us that. It gives us that little motivation to just keep going, keep trying, keep taking those next steps, even when they're not comfortable. So shout somebody out on Saturdays. Give them a shout out. I'll give you a reminder. It's going to be in this group. You'll get reminded. Don't worry. Um, but share their success and like share how proud you are of them. Um, you don't necessarily have to name the person if, if you think that that would make them uncomfortable. But they'll know if you don't tag them or whatever, they'll know. But a lot of times, you know, like if somebody ranks up under you, they typically don't mind if you tag them and, you know, celebrate them for a minute. It is social proof for them also. So that shout out is typically like received very, very well. Um, be silly. Show your fun side. Show who you really are. If you're like a total silly goofball, I'm a total silly goofball. I don't know if any of you guys have ever noticed that. Remember when I sang to you guys in that last thing? Like, I don't sing, I don't karaoke, and if I ever was like intoxicated enough to do karaoke, it was awful. I guarantee it was awful. But I sang to you guys. I sang that little, um, oh, what was it? It was like the my little outtake of the Carly Joe Jepsen uh, Call Me Maybe song. What was it? Um, okay, I'm going to sing you guys again. Um, how did it go? It was, hey, it was a parody on like sending a hey girl message, right? So it was like, Hey girl, I just met you and this is crazy, but here's my product. So buy it maybe. So like I'm a total silly freak like that. Like I totally sing all the time. I can relate anything back to like a one liner from a Jim Carrey movie or a song or whatever. So that's my thing. <laughs> probably my VA will probably clip this and put it on Instagram or something. Um, something su I'm like, I feel super embarrassed now, by the way. Um, but that's me. I'm, I'm a total goofball and I do silly things like that all the time. I got totally busted like making funny kid noises at my kid in the grocery store because I just had my mom goggles on and I didn't even see anybody else in the store and somebody started, I didn't notice until somebody was laughing at me in a good way. I mean, they were like, oh, I got kids too. Like I relate. And I was just like, oh my God, I was going blah, 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 in the middle of the grocery store. And not, I literally was just so focused on like hanging out with Maddie and him not screaming and having like the giggles. I didn't even see these people, right? Um, <laughs> so that's a little bit about me. Uh, <laughs> I can feel, uh, luckily this light is super bright, but I can like feel my face is like, 
blush. I'm a little bit embarrassed. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, okay. So creative quotes. So a lot of times we, with our three to five quotes a day, we talk about what we're posting and all that kind of stuff. And we share these creative quotes. I want you guys to put what that quote means to you, not just some random quote, not like, uh, I can't even <laughs> I can't even think of one on the spot because I'm still like flush and embarrassed from singing to you guys again. Um, something I said I'd probably never do. Maybe I'll just start singing. I'll be the the singing <laughs> singing coach of uh, the Hey Girl messages. Um, but maybe you have your own unique quote. Maybe there's something you say all the time. Like my quote is I'm meant for more than wiping boogers and folding laundry. Like I'm gonna freaking get a hold of Christy and trademark that. Like that's my thing. Like you post that and then you talk about it. Like, why am I more than a booger wiper and a laundry folder? Because I deserve to be, and I'm, I'm more than just a mom. I'm more than just a wife. I'm more than just the wiper of boogers and butts and everything else that requires wiping in a house with children and pets and boys and whatever, right? Like, Share what that quote means to you, whether it's your own quote or a quote that just really spoke to your soul. Don't just share like, some random thing about did you know you should drink half your weight and body or half your weight in ounces and whatever for water you know like people don't actually care about that you want them to actually relate to you right you want them to understand why you're sharing it so dig a little deeper and you want you know the outcome is is like you want to be like oh I just read this quote and I said hell yes to the quote because it spoke to me at this level this is what it said to me this is how it spoke to me and then you share it because you want the readers of that quote to also say, hell yes, that's that that quote just totally spoke to me, spoke to my soul. Um, you can also talk about conversations you've had with other clients, like maybe you're overcoming an objection, like Shakeology is too expensive. No, it isn't. <laughs> you know, like what we're, and you can go on and on about it. Like, here's why it's not expensive. Here's how you're actually saving money. Here's all the different things, or you can move on because they're not your ideal client, right? But then you can actually think back, okay, when I was signing up, did I think Shakeology was too expensive? When I was hosting my, when I was attending my first retreat, did I think that X amount of dollars was too expensive? Would I pay for that? you know, those types of things. And you can put yourself back in their shoes. You can put yourself, you know, rewind your story a little bit and see if you relate to that at all. Maybe it's that your husband says no. Maybe, you know, Melanie Mitchell, her husband said no. So she saved her birthday money. That's part of her story now. And that's part of a story that a lot of women relate to. So encompassing that and then hitting the objections head on, right? Answering the questions. When you have a sales page, you put an FAQ sometimes in there because, oh, well, I can't afford this right up front. Oh, guess what? I have a payment plan. Do you have payment plans? Yes, I have a payment plan. You know, stuff like that. Um, that way also, too, you don't actually have to, and maybe it's a question you get a lot of times or an objection you get a lot of times. You just face it head on. You face it in public. You face it in a group like this, and then you're not saying, like, well, I'm going to pick on Buffy because she's the last person who commented, but it's like, well, Buffy came to me and she said, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, okay, a lot of you guys are reaching out to me or I'm getting questions about this, this, and this. Let me just address it for you. Let me just clear the, like clarify, clear the air. This is what you're going to get. This is how it goes. This is the answer to this. This is no beach body and essential oil companies and Rodan and Fields. No, we are not a pyramid scheme. You know, because that's probably an objection that a lot of people in MLMs get is, oh, I can't do that. It's a pyramid scheme. Well, no, it's not a pyramid scheme. Here's why. I've done the research. This is what a pyramid scheme is. This is what we are. And this is how we are not a pyramid scheme. And you just address it. You address it absolutely head on. Um, a few other things. So these are things that, you know, are in addition to telling your story or even you can incorporate part of your story into it. Like, oh, I thought that this company was a pyramid scheme too. And then I researched and realized that it's not because they would have been closed down and you know, the federal government is looking for all these different things. So you can infuse your stuff into these, into these different teachings and objections and different tips that I'm giving you right now to start to get engagement, to start to engage your audience, to start to gain traction, right? and start to position yourself as the expert that you actually are. 
So the other thing is you can talk about things that actually happened in real life. So you can share stories like about other topics that might seem unrelated to your business, but maybe something that happened like um, with a friend of yours or even a celebrity that could tie in um, it's like a topic, right? Like you can tie that back to it and something that you can normally talk about. So like for me, maybe I talk about, um, you know, I talk a lot about being anti-mom shaming and, you know, I have the mom's making money show. Like I, I do a lot of stuff for moms. So maybe I could talk about, maybe there's a celebrity who had recently been mom shamed and I can kind of highlight that. And we almost do like a little, you know, outtake talk show style on it. Like how dare them, how dare the media say this about this mom or how dare they do this or what, you know, whatever, whatever that looks like. You can use somebody else's highlighted story, a friend, a celebrity, like I said, it could be anybody and could be like, Hey, and I actually did that. I talked about, um, a couple weeks ago, one of my friends, she had to travel for work. Well, just because it happens to be international travel for her and because she's her own boss, the people in her family who she'd asked to care for her kids basically told her like, you're full of shit. We're not watching your kids while you go on vacation. And she's like, no, I'm going for work. And they're like, well, you don't actually have a real job. You know, so because she didn't have a boss or somebody she reported to at a company, a supervisor, they didn't really think that she had a real job, even though she's getting paid for what she's doing. They basically, you know, basically her own family mom shamed her and told her, like, you need to get your priorities straight. You need to be home with your kids. You don't need to be pawning your kids off on other people while you go gallivanting around on vacation. They didn't get it. They don't get what her business is. They don't get the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that she was being paid to be present there. And then they made her, tried to make her feel like shit about it. Like, I just don't have the words. Like, I could probably say some words, but I won't. That's just, it pisses me off. So, <laughs> you know, you can share somebody else's story as it relates to your topic, your business, whatever. Um, a couple of other things is if you have had a big transformation, so if you've transformed your business in a massive way. So when you go from five figures to six figures, when you go from five or, you know, even from four figures to five figures, you know, you go from earning 40 bucks a week to earning 500 bucks a week, whatever that transformation is for you, when you hit those milestones in your weight loss, when you hit those milestones of recovery in, in your skincare, in your autoimmune, whatever, those are milestones and things that you should share, things that you should highlight and things that you should celebrate too, like things that you should be super, super proud of. Um, you know, sharing those types of things and weaving that into your marketing posts. Um, it doesn't have to be all like salesy, but it could be like, oh my God, today I'm celebrating. I paid off my mortgage. You know, like I can't even, you know, like I never thought this day would come and blah, 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 you know, because think about this. So for those of you who are beach body coaches, um, and even for those of you who are not, it's one of the most compelling stories that I've ever heard, um, and it doesn't help that I come from the same small town as him, but Scotty Hobbs, he's a beach body coach under um, Lindsay Matway. One of the most, I mean, most compelling stories in the fact that like every time I hear it, like watch the YouTube video, I like get tears in my eyes. Like I just, it's so moving about when he's paying off his mortgage. Like what, that's something we all desire to have a paid off mortgage and a house paid in full and he's emotional about it and you get emotional about it. But that I will tell you is one of the most compelling stories, but that's part of his story. It's not his only story. It's just part of his journey along the way. And now that's interwoven into this is where I started. This was my job. This was my situation with wanting to bring my wife home. This was one of the major milestones for me when I was able to go from, you know, being a broke dad to paying off my mortgage in X amount of time. That's quite a story. But then again, here comes his hero was Beachbody, right? And that business opportunity and helping other people. And that was the huge payoff, right? So great story. If you guys ever want to look it up, I'm sure he still has it on his YouTube channel. So by sharing what you've accomplished, sharing testimonials, like all of you guys want to see from me and other coaches that you might work with, like you want to see this shit works, right? You want to know like, where did this chick come from? Did she crawl from under some rock? Like, who is she? Like, 
Has anybody ever worked with her before? Does she even have any clients? Like you want to see those testimonials. You want to see like, okay, that somebody's gone through this before you. And your testimonial, especially if you're part of an MLM, your testimonial, I feel like is so impactful more than any other person in your family, in your downline, in your friends list. People follow you. You are your brand. Your story, your transformation, your testimonial of the products, of your Prince Charming, of that company coming in and saving the day is what people are going to want. That, that's how that I'll have what she's having thing comes to be, right? So if you're out there, and I always tell my clients this, don't pitch and expect people to buy a product from you that you're not using yourself. So even like with the branding stuff that I teach and the business strategy that I teach and the funnels and all the automation, it's stuff that I either use currently or have used, right? So I can speak to it as, okay, this is what I really liked about this compared to this. So I don't promote MailChimp because I didn't find it overly intuitive. It just wasn't my gem. I know it works for a lot of people, but I thought active campaign was really intuitive, right? So... I can talk about active campaign. I can talk about all of that stuff. I've teamed up with active campaign and actually got them to do a training for me. Like that's because I believe in active campaign. I like it. Um, so by sharing some of that stuff and sharing your accomplishments, sharing where you've been, hi, Alicia. Um, that's all important stuff, right? So just a couple more things besides sharing testimonials. Cause like I said, people want to know, what you're doing. They want to know that it's working for you. They want to know who, that it's working for other people too. They don't want it to be the stock images from your website. I know we talked about that yesterday. They don't want it to be the people that say results may vary. They want to know like, this is my mom. This is my sister. This is my best friend, Alicia. This is her. This is her. And like that you're actually tagging these people on Facebook and on social media because you actually know them and that they're actual real humans, not some person who was in a test group that you never met and they think, oh, they're airbrushed. How many of you have thought that? I've thought it. You'll want to talk also about, I've got just, this is my last page of stuff here, guys. You want to also talk about something that you've overcome. So I feel like in a lot of ways, I've overcome mom guilt because I'm able to pretty much tell these people who tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing that I don't really care what they think. So I feel like that's a huge accomplishment. I feel like I've overcome so much and I'm not afraid to stand in my truth. I'm not afraid to say, guess what guys, I'm a working mom. I work. And so if my child has to go to preschool, or if I have to get a nanny to come in, or if you guys have to see him like yesterday, kind of climbing all over me, my office is still in us. I haven't, I haven't even picked up the mess that he made from yesterday yet. Like then so be it. That's my truth. And I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel bad that I'm showing my children that I work and that I enjoy working and that I enjoy being a business owner and that I enjoy helping other women. I don't feel bad about that. And for a long time, the way people spoke to me about what I was doing and what their opinions of what I was doing was, it did make me feel bad. It made me second guess it. It made me be like, ooh, maybe I should pay a little bit more attention to the laundry or the dishes or whatever. But I, that's, not, that's not any of their business at the end of the day, right? So you can share those things that you've overcome, whether it's weight loss or mom shaming or struggling to make your first thousand dollars, whatever those things are, you can share that. And people are going to be captivated by that because they're gonna be like, ooh, look at what she's done. That's incredible. I'll have what she's having. Connection stories. So based on your transformational stories and your achievements, you really wanna find connection points and how they possibly relate to your ideal client or your target audience, right? So like which part of the stories can you, which part of your story can you share that's actually something that you think that your people will, will understand, that they'll relate to, that they'll say like, yeah, I get that. I've been there. I've done that. I understand. Think about those things, you know, think about something that maybe you heard somebody else talk about and you're like, yeah, 
it got the wheels turning in my brain like, yeah, that's really happened to me. So that's why I say like, think about when you first started, when you first bought your first bundle, your first kit, your first challenge pack, your first whatever, if you're MLM, or when you decided that you were going to be a life coach or a business coach or whatever it is that you decided, think about what that point in time was like for you, how you felt, where you were, what you were doing and why you made that decision. Because that's worth sharing. Think about something that you're known for. What are you known for? If you don't know, this is your time to figure it out. This is your time to get behind what your unshakable why is, what you stand so strongly for, what you stand so strongly against, and take a stand for it for or against it. If you are 100% for you know, eliminating mom shaming and all of that, stand up and say it. Who cares if people start to dis, you know, unfollow you because they think that they're, because maybe they're mom shaming bullies themselves, whatever, they can F off. They got to go. We're not going to tolerate it anymore. If you want to work, you want to go to work, you want to have a corporate job, you want to earn six figures, go do it. If you want to stay at home and you're like the amazing Pinterest mom that I am not, <laughs> that's awesome. If you want to do a little bit of both and have a business and raise your babies, good. If you want to be a work at home mom and have a housekeeper, get one. And don't let anybody tell you that it's wrong because it's not. Get one. I recommend that everybody gets one. I think every, I think all of us wives need a wife <laughs> in a way, if that makes sense. Um, so um, I've mentioned this before. Speak like you're speaking to your friend. Speak like you're sharing with your best friend over coffee, over cocktails, whatever it is that you do, right? And share your message in that way. Don't talk at people. Speak to them. Share with them. I'm talking to all of you guys in the same way that I would sit down next to my sister and talk. And, um, well, maybe a few less F words, but I'm just giving it to you guys real. I'm just giving it to you guys in my honest opinion, in my normal talking voice, there's no, you know, like radio voice or let's get ready to rumble type of voice. None of that. Yes, I did give you guys a really, really bad singing song thing, but that doesn't count. That was just because I was being silly. Um, you can share your selfies. People want to see what you're doing. People want to know like, oh, they go do these things. A lot of us are lifestyle brands. People want to see what our lives are like. If the only lifestyle that you have is not that attractive, I guess you'd say, like if the, like, yes, people want to see that you're the hot mess express mom from time to time, but they don't want to become you. They won't say I'll have what she's having. If they feel like you can't keep your head above water, if they feel like you are stuck in misery land, if they feel like, I don't think she's taken a shower in a really long time. Like, I'm not saying you have to be put together makeup on every single day that you have to travel the world four times a year. That's a nice goal. And it's even something that I aspire to. In fact, no, I am only going on three trips this year. Well, I am going to Kansas City for a weekend, but that's for, that's for work. That's for my foundation. But you think about that. Like, do you want to be trying to be someone who seems like they're a little more put together, who's making things happen, who's reaching their goals, hitting those milestones, whatever. Yeah, like it's okay to know, like even if you're, even if those milestones are in a weight loss journey, it's okay to know like, you know what? The girl I'm following, the, my mentor, she had two cookies and you know what? She's still doing all right. She's still hitting her goals. She's still doing the things. She's not perfect per se, because nobody can follow perfect but she's still doing it. She had the cookies. She had the Oreos. She ate a cupcake, whatever. She's still doing it. She didn't give up. She didn't beat herself up over it. She didn't quit. She kept going. Same thing in your business. Same thing in your business. We have lots of lumps and lessons along the way. That's why we hire coaches because they lessen the blow quite a bit. They teach us the things so it, you know, we can learn something in six modules instead of trying to learn it over the next, you know, six, eight, ten months, three years, whatever, by piecing it all together from YouTube, that's, you know, it's a convenience thing. We want it right now. We want to do it. And we don't want to take the long, we don't want to take the long way. We don't want to take those lumps. Perfect. Now we don't have to. 
And that's why people hire you. So you don't have to take the lumps along the way. You can go to, you know, the people who follow you, your downline, your, you know, your customers, your clients, they come to you for that guidance. Like I said, because you've been there already, you've already found some of those tips and tricks and tools and ideas and suggestions that you can pass along to them. It's part of your story. They know that you can pass those things along to them. That's why they came to you. They don't want to figure it all out by themselves. They don't want to start from ground zero. They want that support system. They want to know somebody's out there who gets them, who's been there, who's done that, who has all of their you know thoughts in a row. Yes, you might screw up here and there. You might eat the cookie. You might not. You might hit your goal. You might not. But the fact that you don't give up, the fact that you're confident in your stance, the fact that you're confident in your direction, you're confident in your message, you're confident in your unshakable why, perfect. That's what people are going to follow you for. That's when they're going to say, I'll have what she's having and I want the cookie too. <laughs> so when you share your lessons learned, that's huge. Yes, sharing the selfies, sharing the stuff, all of that's good. But, you know, even some people, they share their family, they share the family photos, they share that they do things with their family and how they're like family oriented. That's always optional. Some people don't share their family. You know, you see on Instagram, sometimes um, there's one person, I can't remember who it is, but she only shows her kids from the back of their heads. Like she doesn't ever show their faces. And, you know, that's, and some people, even like me, all of you guys know what my kids look like, especially because my little one's usually climbing all over me, screaming at you guys. So. You guys know those things. A few tips. Only share things that are relevant to the outcome. I was talking with um, a friend yesterday, and and it, when I mentioned it, it was kind of like, okay, so I was meeting, so Kim's on over here. I met Kim for lunch the other day, and this is what we talked about, da, 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 da. And we had this really great idea, and blah, 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 blah. But I don't have to tell you that I met Kim at Taco Bell, and that we had nachos and bean burritos. I don't have to tell you that. That's not part, that's not relevant to anything. However, however, if you are a lifestyle brand and your brand is like a luxury lifestyle and we were to meet at the Ritz Carlton, you bet your sweet ass that I'm probably putting that in the story, right? But if I'm just talking to you guys about a lesson that we learned or a story that we revealed or something that we really just had this really epic idea and the focus is on that really epic idea, doesn't matter where we ate it doesn't matter where we met it doesn't matter what we had for lunch so you can omit some of those details you can omit some of that stuff it's just you know extra words on the you know on the page that don't necessarily need to be there um, and people will probably skim it anyways so you know unless your target audience is Taco Bell people for example not that there's anything wrong with Taco Bell because I actually do like Taco Bell but um, you don't need to add that to the story. So if you're not specifically saying like, I met Kim for tea at the Ritz Carlton, then it doesn't really matter. Um, a few other things is your story doesn't always have to be a tragedy. We talked about that a little bit. Um, you're not always going to be the rags to riches um, coach or mentor or whatever. You may, your story is not going to speak to everybody, but that rags to riches story doesn't speak to everybody either. Um, a couple of other things is like, if you're going through something super serious, like you don't have to share and maybe you shouldn't share while you're actually going through it. Um, so like, for example, if you feel like it's like, okay, I'm going through, so I'm not going through this, but somebody who's going through a divorce, say that's part or a breakup or, or whatever, you don't have to give all the, like air, all the dirty laundry. But you can say how, even if you say like after the fact, right? Come back and say, I'm stronger now because I didn't let this divorce ruin me, right? I've been divorced divorced before and, you know, I feel like I'm a better person because of it. So it's kind of like, but, I, you know, I don't have to, there's no reason to air the dirty laundry. My ex and I are on very amicable terms and it was a very amicable split. That's all people need to know. A lot of times, you know, people can like rise from the ashes after a bad breakup or a bad situation, a bad story, you know, that kind of um, introduction thing before that Prince Charming or hero or whoever comes in and saves the day, right? Um, 
but you don't have to you don't have to like go through it. You don't have to like post your court documents or point names or point names, point fingers and call names on social media to get your point across. Right. And in fact, that actually can make you look kind of bad or sleazy or whatever, but you can say I've once been divorced and this is how I've kind of come back from that. This is, you know, it's impacted my life in a positive way. And this is where I'm at with my life now because it's part of your story. But you don't have to get into all like the little nitty bitty, like this is how much this costs and this is how much he paid or she paid or whatever. None of that matters. None of that matters. So leave those kind of personal details out. You know what I mean? Um, because people don't need to know every single aspect, every single detail. Um, but basically just the bottom line is getting out there, sharing your story more because, you know, like I said, People may have heard your story before. People may know your story, but it releases all the little happy hormones and happy chemicals, the endorphins, the oxytocin, the dopamine, all of that stuff, right? It releases that into your body. You have a physical reaction to hearing a story that you like, that you relate to. Just like when you go to the movies, just like when you read a good book, just like when you listen to the audio books, because that's how I read books. Um, they affect you physically and that's why you keep coming back for more so the more you share your story the more people actually want to hear it the more they want to share it i talk about scotty hobbs story i shared that with people because i thought it was wonderful i thought it was something amazing to aspire to i shared it with several people especially like the men who started to join my downline at that time i shared it with them because one i don't relate to being a dad i don't relate to being a man and i just thought that that was kind of a nice like segue for them like look at what this guy did for his family you know because that was oftentimes you know there was a similarity there so i was able to share his story people will also be able to share your story maybe it's a sibling maybe it's your parents maybe it's somebody who doesn't actually want to join the business but they want to buy your product and so they'll refer people to you so just the point of all of this is to just share 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 your story and we have a bunch of other stuff to go over tomorrow and the next day i'm going to be looking for questions from you guys too um we're going to be talking about fear a little bit more we're going to be talking about um tips for taking good pictures from your phone we're going to be talking about mm -mm 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 -mm. We're going to be talking about unfollowing people who don't make you feel good or happy and how that's okay. We're going to be talking about how there are no wrong answers and how we light the rules on fire. Um, all kinds of stuff. Confidence. We're going to we're going to keep touching back on confidence. We're going to keep coming back to clarity. We're going to keep coming back to building your community. All of those things are going to be like really key components of even just sharing your story, getting your brand out there, getting yourself in front of more people. Because if you just tell your story once and you just do one Facebook Live, say for example, and then you go away, people forget about you. Don't be forgotten about. Share your story. All right, lovelies. Post your questions, I will answer them. Oh, thanks, Puffy. <laughs> um, and I will see you guys back here tomorrow. Um, also too, remember, if you're submitting your workbooks, please, please, please put your name on it. Um, there, there should be a spot for it. I've been getting some people's um, with their names and emails. I don't necessarily need your email address, um, but I do need your name so I know that you're entered so that if you guys decide that you want to be the winner of the, um, the self, if I could talk, <laughs> I think I've been talking too long today. If you guys decide to be the winner of the self-study branding course, I need to know that you actually entered, so I just need to know your name. Um, I'm not sharing the information with anybody. I'm not judging you based on what you put. Um, it's just basically knowing that you participated. So um, the rules again are post a comment on each of the videos, submit your workbook and be registered. So obviously if you've got your workbook, you're probably registered. So um, that's it. So I will post the link to register and I will also post the link for those of you who are interested in getting a head start on hopping into the self-study program. Um, if you did, purchase the self-study program, say today or tomorrow or whatever, and you are the winner, I will either give you a 197 voucher to use towards something else, 
or I will give you a refund. So um, rest assured if you want to get going on that and you are actually the winner that, um, that you will be taken care of in that way. So that's it, guys. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. And I think I'm we're going live at 9 a.m. tomorrow. I was kind of back and forth um, scheduling. Um, but yeah, see you guys here in the morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern. If you guys have any questions, post them here. I will answer them tomorrow. All right. Maybe if it lets me close the video.